What's up guys, CG here, and welcome to kind of a special video here on the Hybrid Network, and that is our channel's official review of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is the first spinoff of what is now a planned franchise of Harry Potter spinoffs. Literally, this went from one Fantastic Beast movie planned to a potential trilogy, and now to five movies as of last month. And you know by the time the next one comes out, we might have a full 22 movie series order, right? But seriously, that's probably what happens when you've got the genius mind behind the original Harry Potter series, J.K. Rowling, writing these films. There's always more and more to flesh out. I digress though, I should probably get down to my thoughts on the film itself. A quick summary for those of you that won't watch the full video, I really did enjoy it a lot. The acting top to bottom was pretty fantastic, and visually it's pretty great. It also does a fantastic job of world building on top of all the world building that was done in the eight Harry Potter films, but ultimately I feel like I really enjoyed this movie mostly because I grew up with that original series, both the books and the films, and if you didn't like those, I'm not sure you're really going to enjoy this one as much. As for a brief plot synopsis, our story sees Newt Scamander, Hogwarts expelli, and budding magical zoologist entering New York City with a case full of creatures. After a mix-up that leads to some of the creatures escaping, the authorities believe that the mystical havoc wreaked upon the city is therefore, directly or indirectly, Mr. Scamander's fault. But not all is what it seems, as there are forces at play larger than even some of the creatures Newt carries around in his case. With the help of two witches, the career-minded Porpentina Goldstein, and her telepathic sister Queenie, and the nomad read American for Muggle Jacob Kowalski, Scamander sets out to recover his creatures, clear his name, and ultimately unravel the mystery of just what, or who, is terrorizing New York. First and foremost, I've gotta tackle the acting, because it's actually really, really solid. Starting at the top, Eddie Redmayne, you know, I heard some criticism about his portrayal, but honestly, I kind of enjoyed it. I mean, maybe it's just the inner nerd in me that's been in those shoes, but I really connected with the way they portrayed the character. I understood where he was coming from. In a more critical light, I honestly kind of feel like Redmayne was just kind of fulfilling the script. He was doing the best he could, but as I kind of said above, I don't really feel like the script was even holding him back that much. No issues between me and Mr. Redmayne here. Maybe the real standout to me is Dan Fogler as Jacob Kowalski, the non-magical veteran and aspiring baker is kind of meant to be your run-of-the-mill audience vehicle. We're seeing this show through his eyes, and in a way, for the first time I've felt in a while watching a movie, I feel like this kind of character is actually necessary. Not only does he get most of the great lines in the movie, he actually really kind of helps to ground the whole thing. If it weren't for him in some scenes, I would have forgotten that this was set in New York City, to be honest. It would have just felt like Harry Potter in this nameless, old-timey city where people forgot to be British. The audience's connection to him might have also been helped by the fact that, you know, sitting there in the theater and seeing some of these incredible visuals, you're struck by two things. One, Harry was definitely not doing this kind of magic, and two, you know, it's been four years since we've seen this wizarding world, and CG has improved leaps and bounds since then, which probably explains point number one. So you kind of feel for him sitting there and watching all the incredible things going on, because it's the first time in a while that you as an audience are seeing those incredible things too. In a two-for-one, I really want to take a second to highlight Colin Farrell and Ezra Miller. We'll talk about Colin the most first, and then Ezra second. I love Colin Farrell. I think he's an extremely underrated actor. I think he does an admirable job with what he's given in this movie. That being said, his character, Graves, is really, really not given much. And then, no spoilers, he's shuttled off with a really, really strange and unsatisfying character payoff. As for Ezra Miller, I kind of feel the same way. He actually does great with what he's given, and his character actually is one of the most intriguing ones in the film, but once again, it just kind of feels like a ooh, so sorry Ezra, we've run out of time kind of situation. Don't worry, you'll probably understand more when you see the film. As for the Wizarding Goldstein sisters, they are both pretty fantastic, though as is the case with most of the supporting characters, like Colin Farrell and Ezra Miller, they're not really given much to work with. However, and minor spoilers ahead, so skip away or pause in five seconds, la 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 la, it seems like they'll be making a return in potential sequels, especially Porpentina, who, as we know from Harry Potter lore, is, shall we say, the future Mrs. Scamander. For the few of you that might have been wondering, for all the hullabaloo about her joining the cast, Zoe Kravitz has a blink and you miss it cameo, but in a role that sets up massively for future films. As for the more negative aspects of this movie, it really does feel rushed, as many other reviewers have noted. I will say it doesn't quite feel overstuffed to the point of really breaking the movie completely. The plot still flows, but you can definitely feel the strain of so much world building on the story. 
As a prime example, when they finally get to the bottom of the plot's central mystery, what's causing this chaos in New York, it feels a little bit underdeveloped, with a twist that really doesn't emotionally land as much as it could have because you didn't ju you just didn't spend enough time with those characters. But the whole concept is something that seems like it'll loom large in sequels with any luck. With that said, the world building, the expanding of this American side of the world of wizardry, is really one of the most intriguing things about the film. It really gets most of the effort and the work in this movie, so it's kind of a, you know, a give some, take some situation. My only other big negative is super spoilery, and I can't really get into it in detail. I mean, I'm going to try to beat around the bush as much as possible, but if you're listening, you probably won't understand until you see the movie. Still no spoilers here. There is a pretty major twist at the end of the climax of the movie, like right in that resolution phase, and let's just say one character is revealed. And I don't know if my issue was just the specific actor chosen to play the specific role, or the fact that it cut short a character that really needed something a little bit more to complete what was a solid performance, or the fact that it just comes completely out of left field and doesn't make sense in the context of the story, or, or what, but it really was the jumping the shark moment of the film for me. Like, even the blatant deus ex machina that follows was really, really, really overshadowed by the twist. I feel like if that hadn't happened, I would be sitting here complaining about that deus ex machina, but no, here I am complaining about a major character reveal that hopefully will be better explained and approved upon in the next four Fantastic Beasts movies. As a final note, this really leads me to my biggest caveat, as briefly touched upon it way back in my brief summary. If you didn't like the Harry Potter series, I honestly don't think you'll like this movie. If you're a mega fan, I think you'll definitely love it. Away from those extremes, if you're a more casual moviegoer, one of two things will happen. A, if you're going in looking for a fun, shut your brain off, laugh a little, see some cool effects with just enough plot, even if you could care less about the world building kind of movie, I think you'll have a good time. But B, if you're going in with a very critical eye, world building be damned, effects have zero bearing on you, you probably won't like it that much. And that's not to say it's that cut and dry. I feel like people will land anywhere on that spectrum for sure. I mean, for me, a lifelong Harry Potter fan, I really deeply enjoyed it. I appreciated all of the effort put into world building, as well as a lot of the references and setups for potential sequels that were built in. And I feel like even casual Harry Potter fans will really get a lot of joy out of this film. Overall, I'll give Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them a 7.5 out of 10. I really liked it myself as a Harry Potter fan, and even if I wasn't, I feel like the solid acting, interesting premise, and a decent dose of humor for good measure made it very enjoyable and worth the watch. And if you're a normal subscriber and you've watched this far, I just want to say a massive thank you for your support and please comment so that I can I can thank you personally. I know you guys are sitting there thinking, well, this stuff isn't usually in our wheelhouse, but we're looking to expand our coverage radius. And so we're going to be putting out some feelers in the near future to see what y'all might be interested in. I mean, it seems like people have really, really been vibing with the Power Rangers coverage anything Alien, Covenant, and Predator, all that stuff recently, but we're just trying to be as thorough as possible in figuring out what you enjoy to try and more accurately bring that stuff to you. So, yeah, hit us up in the comments if you watched this far. I promise I will reply to you if you say that you have. Like, literally, that is sacrosanct, but don't forget to smash that like if you like what you saw, and subscribe for more great content every single day. Signing off, this is CJ, and I'll see you next time.